Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here with First Congregational Church of Concord. We're so glad that you are here, whether you are in room, you are on Zoom, or you are joining us live on Facebook. I have just a couple of announcements to begin this morning. The first for our get to know you question. If you could design a great friend, what would they be like? If you could design a great friend, what would they be like? Also want to make sure uh, that you all know that on September 10th, you've, we've got our coming up Save the Dates calendar at the bottom. Um, September 10th is our regathering Sunday. And as a part of that, we are going to um, bless any um, school kits or items for school kits. Um, if you are somebody who can sew, likes to sew, one of the things we always need are the school kit bags, um, and there is patterns available for those, uh, both online and I think we have printed copies. Um, we do have a, a, a friend uh, of the church who has volunteered to sew a bunch more bags, and she usually sews anywhere from 50 to 60 for us, which is just such a gift. Um, and so we probably will need at least school supplies for 50 to 60 bags. Um, and so we're going to uh, bless those um, on that day, but if you bring them in advance or have a chance to bring them in after, that's totally fine. Um, but we'll be highlighting our school kit blessing and ministry as a part of our regathering Sunday. Also, for anybody who is interested, I will be going up to Horton Center on September 2nd for Tim Hughes's retirement party. Tim Hughes has been our executive director of Horton Center and our uh, outdoor ministries um, for the past six years, he was only supposed to be a one-year interim, and then the pandemic happened, and lots of other things happened. So, um, and uh, at the annual meeting, which is also on your coming up Save the List dates, which is October 21st, we will be um, uh, officially hiring in and blessing in Tibi Pare, who will be our new executive director of uh, Horton Center, and we are thrilled and excited that that's all going to happen. So. If you're obviously welcome to drive up to Horton Center yourself, but if you're interested, I can take up to three people in my car. Um, if you've never been, or if you haven't had a chance to go this summer, or if you haven't been in years, let me know. I'd love to take you up with me. Um, and I believe those are all the announcements that I have. And I mean, there, please continue to look through the, the list of coming up. We've got a lot of great things coming up, things that we've been doing, things that we're now starting again after the summer ways for us to be in community together and also community with the wider church as well. So let us uh, now prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we listen to our praying. this morning, remembering that an intention is essentially a focus. So we invite you to choose a focus for worship. Nice. 
I invite Phil to come forward and lead us in our opening words. We gather to give thanks to you, O Lord. With, with all, all our hearts. We will sing your praises before all creation. And, and rejoice in your steadfast love. You have created us, O Lord, and made us for yourself. In you and through you, we become everything you have made us to be. And let us continue bringing ourselves into God's presence. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we gather this morning with those who love you, that we might sing your praises and share your love with one another. You have shown your faithfulness to us every day in ways that we do not always recognize. So we gather today in order to thank you for your constant watch care over us. Help us to entrust our lives to you and your purposes. We ask we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Before I share our uh, Psalter from the Reverend Benjamin Chavis Psalter this morning, I want to invite you to note um, that we are doing a litany of scripture passages and singing hymns together this morning. And so um, we're going to invite you to remain seated for each of the hymns that we're going to sing in between the scripture passages uh, to create this space of praise, uh, but also learning and listening together. So I'm going to begin uh, with Psalm 80 from the Reverend Benjamin Chavis Psalter, which is entitled, On Bended Knee. On bended knee, O God, I constantly pray to thee for an end to human exploitation and tyranny on earth. I believe in prayer, O God. I know that you do hear and shall answer the cries of thy people oppressed. O God, deliver us from the prison dungeons Free us from institutional slavery. Deliver us, O oh God, from the urban cement ghettos, from the, quote, New South plantations. On bended knee, O oh God, I constantly pray to thee for thy love and peace. Here ends our Psalter lesson. Amen. And I invite you now to join with me in singing More Love to You, O Christ, number 456. Oh, oh, oh. 
you now from the book of Isaiah in the Hebrew Scriptures, starting in the 51st chapter. Listen closely, you who diligently work for justice, and look for the eternal one, for what is fair and true. It would be good for you to look back, to look to the place from whence you came, and rock out of which you were shaped, and the quarry from where you were mined. Look to your spiritual ancestors, Abraham, your father, and Sarah, who birthed you. Abraham was only one person when I called him, but with generous goodness I made from him a numerous people. The Eternal One will relieve the troubles and worries of Zion and bring comfort to the rubble of its destruction. God will turn you deserted places into a flourishing garden like Eden of old. Happy voices will ring out in the eternal garden. Buoyant music and thanksgiving will fill the air. Eternal one, listen closely, you who are mine. Lend an ear, my nation. For my instruction will go straight out into all the world, and my justice will illuminate all people wherever they are. My just is, justice is coming closer. My rescue is on the way. My strong arm will extend justice to the nation. Distant, distant shores are coming to me with hope that I will accomplish it. Don't worry, look up at the sky, and down at the earth. The sky will disappear like smoke. The earth will wear out like a well-used garment. Every last thing may perish and dissolve, but my salvation is for all time. My justice will not end. Here ends the lesson. Amen. Amen. And let us join now together in singing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
of Psalms in the Hebrew Scriptures. Psalm 138. To you, Lord, I give my whole heart, a heart filled with praise, for I am grateful before the gods. My heart sings praises to you and you alone. I bow before you, looking to your holy temple, and praise your name for your unfailing love and your truth. For you have placed your name and your word over all things at all times. On the day I needed you, I called, and you responded, and infused my soul with strength. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Eternal One, because they have heard the words you have spoken. They will marvel at the Eternal's ways, and they will sing, for great is the glory of the Eternal. Though he is greatest of all, he is attentive to the needy and keeps his distance from the proud and pompous. Whenever I walk into trouble, you are there to bring me out. You hold out your hand to protect me against the wrath of my enemies and hold me safely in your right hand. The Eternal will finish what he started in me. Your faithful love, O Eternal One, last forever. Do not give up on what your hands have made. Here ends the lesson. Amen. And let us join now together in singing, Let Us With a Joyful Mind. and sisters, in light of all I have shared with you about God's mercies, I urge you to offer your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice to God, a sacred offering that brings Him pleasure. This is your reasonable, essential worship. Do not allow this world to mold you in its own image, instead be transformed from the inside out by renewing your mind. As a result, you will be able to discern what God wills and whatever God finds good, pleasing, and complete. Because of the grace allotted to me, I can respectfully tell you not to think of yourselves as being more important than you are. Devote your minds to sound judgments, since God has assigned to each of us a measure of faith. For in the same, same way that one body has so many different parts, each with different functions, we too, the many, are different parts that form one body in the anointed one. 
each one of us is joined with another and we become together what could not be done alone. Since our gifts are varied depending on the grace poured out on each of us, it is, it is important that we exercise the gifts that we have been given. If prophecy is your gift, then speak as a prophet according to your proportion of faith. If service is your gift, then serve well. If teaching is your gift, then teach well. If you have been given a voice of encouragement, then use it often. If giving is your gift, then be generous. If leading, then be eager to get started. If sharing God's mercy, then be cheerful in sharing it. Here ends the lesson. Amen. Let us now join together in singing, Take My Life, God, Let It Be. Amen. No, you are welcome to join in that as well. 
Let us now share together in singing for the beauty of the earth. in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. To begin this morning, I want to remind us that this past year, during Lent, we had a reframe for the word salvation from Reverend Brian McLaren. McLaren shared that whenever we read the word or say the word salvation, we would do well to replace it with the word liberation. Therefore, my sermon title actually reads cloudy with a chance of liberation. And verse 6 of our passage from Isaiah reads, Don't worry. Look up at the sky and down at the earth. The sky will disappear like smoke. The earth will wear out like a well-used garment. Every last thing may perish and dissolve, but my liberation is for all time. My justice will not end. The sky will disappear like smoke. I don't know about each of you, but this brings to mind all of the fires still raging in Canada, and the fires that just devastated the island of Maui in Hawaii. The fires that raged in California, Oregon, and Washington this past year and in years prior, and the 46 million acres that burned in the Australian fires from June 2019 to January 2020. Now, while forest fires are a natural part of the cycle of a forest, the level of fires that the planet has and is experiencing in the past four years is from our overuse. The earth will wear out like a well-worn garment. I need my prop for this one. How many of you or your children had a binky blanket or a much-beloved stuffed animal? 
And after about six years or so, how many of those stuffies still had both eyes? And all of their stuffing? And fur that was the same color as when it was first purchased? How many of those binky blankets look more, more closely resemble a handkerchief now than a blanket? Our poor planet looks and feels like a well-used stuffy or blanket, with eyes missing, much of the stitching gone, loads of bare spots on the fur, discoloration from the original colors in which it was made. Unfortunately, like a well-beloved stuffy or blanket, our overuse of the planet has been from a space of greed and fear. Although, some might argue that it isn't so different, as normally a beloved stuffy or blanket are clung to out of a need for comfort based on our childhood fears. We've made a lot of mistakes as the guardians and defenders of planet Earth. Mistakes that are putting our, our species at risk for survival, let alone the survival of the rest of creation. Yes, we are finally looking at the situation as an adult looks back at one's stuffy or blanket and realizes, ouch, yep, I played with you a bit too hard, didn't I? Another example recently of that would be Weird Barbie from the new Barbie movie, which if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. They said in the advertisements for the film, you'll either really like it if you loved Barbie, or you'll really like it if you hated Barbie. So there you are. Now, speaking of looking back, the beginning of our passage from Isaiah today speaks strongly of the action of recalling our ancestors with intention, of bringing them into our present mind, of seeking the spiritual wisdom that has been both passed down to us and the wisdom that our ancestors desire to give us in this present moment. Now to highlight this point, God has invited me to tell you the story of the single palm branch that is on the altar this morning. Three and a half years ago, we were trying to figure out how to worship online for Palm Sunday. Part of that plan included building and decorating the worship altar space in my home. Sheila Swenson brought over two different types of palms to add to the ambience of the altar space. One that originated in the jungle climate, or at least its ancestors did, and one that originated in the desert climate. The one from the jungle climate finally claimed that it was tired and retired back to the earth from dust to dust about six months ago. And I thought that the desert palm was also on its way back to the earth. See, the palm branch behind me is two years or two life cycles of the whole plant old. For a palm branch, that's ancient. Last year, it let me know it was ready to die, to become an ancestor of the plant. Just as soon as the three new shoots coming up out of the middle at that time had grown enough to sustain the plant into the future. Well, sadly, the fall chill hit at just the wrong time last year and the three shoots only grew up halfway, and the ends of all three shriveled. I don't know how else to explain this, except to say that this ancient palm branch, when I went to lay it to rest, told me I cannot die yet. This plant will not survive without me. It needs my strength and my ability to draw in nutrients from the sun and the soil to live through this next cycle. Leave me be for the moment. My time will eventually come. And it did just that. The three stunted shoots all died before their elder. 
the last one I laid to rest about three weeks ago. Just as soon as the new shoots this year raised their heads about four inches. As I did so, this ancient one said, my time is coming soon. I will let you know when. A week ago, it said, soon, be ready. And yesterday, it called to me and it said, it's time. I now am drawing away vital nutrients from the shoots. They need space to grow and thrive. My time has finally come to rest. Now because God had already invited me to share this story with you, I wanted to take a picture of the palm with the ancient one still with them and the shoots before granting its request. So I took the photo and I'm gonna pass around a copy of it for you all to see. And for those online, I'm gonna come close to the Zoom camera for a minute, and I'm gonna come close to the Facebook camera. And when we've had a chance to everybody to see it, I'm gonna ask you, what do you see? So Annie, I'll show it to you first. I'll pass this to you. I'll show it to my Zoom friends. Am I close enough too far? A little closer. A little closer. A little closer. Good. <laughs> oh, Facebook friends. I'll pass this one over. So what did you see? Yeah, the older plant was glowing. Mm -hmm. And to me, it looked like a ghost. Mm -hmm. It was already gone. Mm -hmm. It was already gone. It had already let go in spirit and needed me to complete the transition. So I grabbed my clippers. And I went out on the beautiful sunny day yesterday and asked if it was ready. Yes, it replied. Now, I decided to say a prayer of gratitude because, you know, I'm a pastor. However, I'd only gotten halfway through my prayer when it said, Oh, for goodness sake, just do it already, you young whippersnapper! And I burst out laughing. And I reached out and I did just as it asked. I then took another picture with the new palm leaves. And the energy in this photo is filled with vitality and vibration. They are vibrating with the energy and wisdom of their ancestors, and I can feel their joy and excitement and eagerness to thrive. so that I could share its story with all of you. Yes, it said, but then you must promise to lay me to rest in the flames 
as you have done for all our ancestors. And I promise. God provided strength to this palm branch past what would be considered a normal lifespan so that it could participate in the liberation and continuing life of the whole plant. Now, is it fair that the new shoots last year were stunted? This one said, bear's got nothing to do with it. It was what it was, and I am proud to have been put to use. In our passage from Isaiah today, God says, listen closely, you who are mine. Lend an ear, my nation, for my instruction will go straight out into all the world, and my justice will illuminate all people wherever they are. My justice is coming closer. My rescue is on the way. My strong arm will extend justice to the nations. Distant shores are looking to me with hope that I will accomplish it. And also, listen closely, you who diligently work for justice, and look for the Eternal One, for what is fair and what is true. It would be good for you to look back, look to the place where you came from, to the rock out of which you were shaped and the quarry from which you were mined. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, as this ancient palm has taught by example. Give us courage to change the things we can, to participate in your plan, as this ancient palm has demonstrated. And grant us the wisdom to know the difference as this ancient palm showed with fierceness, oh, for goodness sake, just do it already, you young whippersnapper. Amen. Amen. We will now take just a moment of silence to pause and reflect. invite you to join with me in singing O Grant Us Light, number 469, and I will invite you when we are to that point to rise in body or spirit and join with me in singing.
let us join now together for time in community. First, we will highlight our Global Ministries weekly prayers, and this week it, we are praying with and for Puerto Rico. We begin with our mission moment. I think we have all read or heard this passage from the Bible on more than one occasion. The passage that they are referring to is actually that of the beginning of Exodus, which of all the ones I chose, chose not to do this morning. So, but it's, he's talking about the beginning of Exodus and the story of baby Moses. The one who gives does it with simplicity. The one who occupies a position of responsibility performs his role with all care. The one who helps those in need does it with joy. We enter this reading of the Exodus with a happy note of how God saved Israel from hunger through the leadership and the call of Moses and of Joseph. Without a doubt, God redeemed the people of Israel through the leadership of Moses, Joseph, Miriam, the daughter of the Pharaoh, the mudroom, and the mother of Moses. Through the exercise of this call and leadership, the health of all the bitterness they accumulated during captivity. It is straightforward to know if we are true Christians when through our leadership and call, we accompany those, all those victims of the, who are enslaved and bitterness generated by a society that becomes increasingly unjust and throws people into loneliness and despair. Without a doubt, faith is what saves. Still, true faith is manifested by assuming the call and exercising it without fear of the leadership that it entails. In the Hebrew scriptures, fearing God means trusting him, having reverence and faith and obeying God's will. Let's look at the example of the Hebrew midwives. Although Pharaoh exercises power over the life or death of these women, they are determined to fulfill God's will and trust that God will vindicate their loyalty. I believe this continues to be our great challenge at this time as a church, one of accompanying God's will and acting in justice. The wisdom of the heart is to go out of itself toward our neighbors. Let us not forget the dimension of gratuitiveness or caring for one another. May Jesus help us remember that we must live the life he has given us in solidarity and always with our hands full of concrete acts of love. Let us pray now together with Puerto Rico. God of life, we ask you to enlighten those who claim their rights on the streets of Puerto Rico so that their actions bring positive solutions to the country's problems. Lord, may we take this moment of prayer as an opportunity to unite as a church and work together in the search for common good to overcome the crisis, corruption, violence, and other evils, and let us say together, God of life, have mercy on our Puerto Rico. We also pray for the accompanying ministry of the Iglesia Evangelica Unada de Puerto Rico, the United Evangelical Church of Puerto Rico, and its different community ministries, Bartomeo, Jesus, Bread of Life, Cineret, Onesimus, Right to Man Amebac, Lunch of Life, Dorcas and his friends, and the Heart to Heart. We lift up prayers for the leadership of women and men in those ministries, knowing that you call us to lead by service. We implore you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And let us continue our prayers this morning as we lift our prayers that we've brought with us, be they prayers of joys or prayers of concerns, we will take just a moment of silence to listen again for God in our hearts, and then I will invite us to lift up those prayers, either aloud if you are comfortable, or in the silence of your hearts. For each prayer lifted aloud, I will respond, God of liberation, and I invite you to join me in our response of receive our prayers. Let us begin by listening for God in our hearts. God of our ancestors and of each of us today, we ask that you hear now the prayers that we have brought with us this morning. Mm -hmm. 
prayers of thanksgiving and joy for our granddaughter's successful surgery. God of liberation, receive our prayers. Prayers for my family as we celebrate the life of my cousin Tom. Mm -hmm. God of liberation, receive, receive our prayers. Prayers for all the children coming back to school this week. It's going to be good for the teachers. Happy to the teachers. Mm -hmm. God of liberation. Receive our prayers. Prayers for Uncle Ellen, who is dying of cancer, and for his nephew, my grandson, Julian. God of liberation, receive, receive our, our prayers. Prayers for Eddie's Carol, sister of Carol Emily, and she starts her. God of liberation, receive our prayers. Gracious God, in love you created us and in love you sustain us day after day. So it is with confidence that we bring our prayers to you, knowing that you hear us and will respond. We offer our prayers for the world around us. We pray for those who find themselves in bondage, those forced into enslavement or prostitution, those oppressed by governments or economic systems, those enslaved by personal addictions. We pray for those who struggle to raise their children in the midst of violence and or poverty, those who can only stand by and watch as their children die of starvation or malnutrition, of preventable disease, or from gang violence. We pray for those who refuse to participate in violence or injustice, who courageously stand up for what they know is right, regardless of the personal consequences. We also pray for those who oppress others, who are unable to break free from cycles of violence and anger, who are no longer able to empathize with their victims. We pray for all who suffer this day, O oh God, whether physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. May your presence surround and sustain each one so that they may know your love and live. Finally, God, we pray for ourselves, members of your one body here on earth. Break down the barriers that divide us from one another. Unite us in our common allegiance to you. Grant us compassion and humility in our relationships. Release the gifts you have given to each one, so that in us and through us, your kingdom might come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we ask all this through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Let us join together in our sung Amen, This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine.
enter into our time of offertory, of giving back, of deep gratitude to God. Here again, Psalm 116. What shall I render to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of liberation, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And so we invite you in this space and time to lift up your gratitudes to God, either in the form of a handwritten note of service to offer whatever uh, service or outreach you did last week or that you're planning on doing this week, or any financial offerings that you have this morning, knowing that God will use everything that we offer. Let us be together in the spirit of gratitude. together in our prayer of dedication. In deep gratitude for all that you have done for us, we offer ourselves and our gifts to you, living sacrifices of worship and praise. Transform our hearts and minds from the inside out. Show us what is good and pleasing in your sight so that we may be quick to recognize your call and quick to respond. In the name of Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. And I invite you to join with me in singing our closing hymn, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Thank you. 
And let us take a moment of silence to set our intentions for the week ahead, or depending on where your heart and spirit are, maybe just the day ahead, or even just the hour. So please join us for a few minutes as we cheer together in community following worship. And now, God of all the ages, give us the vision to look beyond ourselves, to stand with the great ancestors of our faith, and with all the unnamed ordinary folk who have shown love to the loveless, welcomed the stranger, spoken out for justice and righteousness. As we go out from here, help us to be people of integrity, and to give us a vision of your glory, where the wilderness will be filled with joy and gladness, with thanksgiving, and with voices of song. Amen. Peace, dear friends.